I'm Megan and this is my husband Bo and our daughter Beckett. Join us on our journey as we relocate our family to raw land in beautiful northeastern Washington. Watch as we start from scratch and build the life we desire. Don't forget to like and subscribe. big truck <laughs> our wonderful friend went and picked up our bro our boiler our boiler for us today the company that we ordered everything from that designed it was terrified to ship it due to um, the freight issues and stuff lately with COVID so uh, luckily um, he was able to he was able to go pick that up for us in here but we don't have actual lights or anything up yet so Bo just left for a work trip for the rest of the week all right I don't know where I lost you but uh, Bo's gone for the rest of the week with work trip and he has left me in charge of oh, um he's gone the rest of the week for work and so he has left me in charge of cutting all of the headers and the trimmers for the doors on the downstairs so we can get those finished um, and then we can start framing the walls upstairs. So that's what I'm gonna be working on today. I once again have to give my grandpa a big shout out and thank you because he brought us this heater. It doesn't look like much. It runs off kerosene and um, power, but uh, again, the shop's insulated but not heated and then we have the Tyvek separating the two. There is a good, I let this run 20 minutes before I came outside. I don't know, there's a good, uh, maybe even 20 degree difference. Like I can feel freezing cold air on my hand right here and I'm totally fine right here. So thanks Pops, once again, you saved the day. We couldn't have gotten through this build without Buster or Mini Pearl. What should we name the heater? <laughs> Does it already have a name? My grandpa loves to name things. So thanks, grandpa. Chop sauce it up, ready to go. Now to get um, my measurements and make sure I'm doing this correctly. Okay, so we didn't film it, but yesterday Bo kind of gave me a lesson on how to I have, and again, we are not professionals. <laughs> I've never done anything before, so I just do what, he's, what he tells me to do. Um, I'm gonna start with the gym, because <laughs> I know that's one that needs to be done. Uh, and it says there's a rough opening of three foot two inches. And then I need to add three inches onto that length before I cut it. That is because the rough opening only accounts for where the door specifically is going to go. And it doesn't take into account um, the width of the two by fours that are on each side. So that's where the three inches come from. I don't know if you know this, but two by fours are not actually two inches. They're less than that. It must be like an inch and a half or something. But I guess saying, you know, an inch and a half by a, I need 12 inch and a half by three half inches. Wow. Okay, that is a mouthful, so I can see why they round up. <laughs> anyway, so I need to add three inches. So the rough opening for this says three, two, so I need to cut my first piece at three, five. I'm gonna try to get all this done while he's out of town and pray to sweet baby Jesus 
that I don't mess this up because lumber is so expensive right now. And I'm cutting these out of two by 12s, I think. Again, when I measure them, they're like 11 and a quarter. So I'm assuming these are two by 12s. Do we round up in woodwork? Who knows? All right, safety goggles, gloves, top A as my husband calls it, tape. Got my pencil. Let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and label these <laughs> as I cut them. That way I don't forget where they go or mess up, right? You guys, I don't know if anybody else gets really nervous when they're cutting wood, but I do. <laughs> I swear, I know people say measure twice, cut once. I'm like, measure five times for one cut because I don't want to be wrong. So I'm also going to go read my plan again really quick and make sure that uh, I have the right dimension. I was right. So here goes nothing. So Bo just called and his flight was delayed, which was gonna cause him to miss his connection flight. So he's not gonna be able to meet, to make the work meeting that he was for, um, supposed to go to, which sucks for work, but it's kind of awesome because now he gets to come home and hopefully we might even be able to get our boiler installed and operating um, by this weekend then instead of having to wait until this weekend to do it, so. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep working on this and hopefully get all of it cut before he gets home. The airport's a little over an hour away, about an hour away. <clears throat> Maybe not even that long, but, um, so about a short amount of time, so let's get to it. Carry in some two by fours because they're not load-bearing walls, so they don't need to be cut out of the 2x12s um, and do those for the headers. Same thing, I add three inches. They just don't need to be as large because they're not carrying a load. They're re they run parallel with the floor joists, so they're not supportive. <clears throat> I only have two more cuts out of the 2 by 2 Oh wait, I do have one more cut I can make right now. It's a 6 by 2 so, <coughs> excuse me, 6 by 5 for this closet. Okay, I checked my calculations. It is right, it needs to be 6.5. Rough opening is 6.2, so I need to cut two of them at 6.5. I went and measured um, the closet door opening just to make sure, and I got a little confused, but I'll explain that in a minute. Lumber packages aren't cheap. We got lucky, and um, we have had very few twisted pieces, like maybe a handful. So we've been able to use everything and we're gonna end up with spares, which again is not normal. I don't know that we have spares this size though. We have spare two by fours. Hey! One major benefit of building a shouse, guys, or a barn dominium, whatever you wanna call it, you can work inside when it gets those below freezing temperatures. This morning when we got up, it was only 19 degrees. That's cold. And we didn't have any frozen pipes today. I don't know if you remember, but a few weeks ago, our hose for our water froze like three days in a row. That was Bo, who wants me to measure in between the two windows where we're gonna put the fireplace. Ooh, that was right. So two windows right here. The fireplace is gonna go here. As you can tell, this is a load bearing wall. So we have to do something a little bit different. We're actually gonna build an accent piece that comes forward and that'll ho house the, um, we're gonna do an electrical fireplace there. You can't drill through these posts. So any sort of wiring, electrical work that needs to go through, you can't um, drill through there. So we're gonna make an accent and we'll pop forward and then we'll be able to have a fireplace there. But let's see how, <clears throat> what the different distance is here. Okay, so what I was saying, I came out here and measured um, <clears throat> the rough opening. So here's the closet that I'm looking at right now. This is gonna be our utility closet, um, electrical closet, I guess. It's gonna house like the security system and stuff like that. But anyways, so when we framed, Bo wrote on here, <clears throat> excuse me. So the X means that's where the stud goes. 
the T is trimmer. So the trimmer goes here, which it's a two by four, but it doesn't go all the way to the ceiling. It just goes to the header. So trimmer goes here. So from this line to the one on the other side is the rough opening. So when I measured, I was like, oh, it's six five. That's not what the drawing says. But if you go from trimmer to trimmer, it is six two, which is the rough opening. So another fun thing I learned in framing. It's a good thing my husband has some experience doing this because total fish out of water here. I, from before all this, was a teacher. And what did I do with my other glove? The framing houses was not something that was in my uh, repertoire or had I ever <laughs> thought that that was something that I would do in my life, so here I am. Thing that I learned about the trimmers. So the floor, when you're framing, there's the green board, that's what it's called. I don't know why it's not even green, just like a darker brown. It's on the floor and you don't cut out the actual door frame until later. But so what Bo taught me for cutting the trimmers is you then, you still have to account for that. So they're also two by fours or two by sixes or whatever, which really isn't two inches, it's an inch and a half. So when I measure the trimmers, I need to take off an inch and a half, half to count for that because the trimmer will sit on that and it'll run to the header and then the rest of that will get cut out. Now I just need to figure out how tall I make all these. Okay, so bear with me. You're gonna work this out with me. If this is, it's supposed to be eight one, so I need to m subtract an inch and a half. Maybe that's him calling back. Uh, um, the the wall between the um, shop and the house, that yes. that door frame. What do we decide? Does it need to be a two by six or a two by twelve? It runs parallel can, to the floor. Yeah, that can be a two by twelve. So just make it a two by twelve. Okay, I'm not gonna cut yeah. that yet. Then until we do figure out the other um, the other closet because it's gonna have. It might be yeah. It yeah. Might run out. Yeah. Okay. Does the, if we're not even making that a closet, does it still need a header? Yes. It can't just go all the way to the be, ceiling? If it, unless it's gonna be uh, just a wall. Like, could it just go all the way to the ceiling instead of having like a weird shelf? Like, yeah, head space? The way, it'll, ha it'll have to be the height of the tube Clock. or the header. Right, wait. Okay, so the trimmer, the, on the part, so where it says rough opening, the three two is the door opening, and then the eight one is the, is the length, right? Yeah. That's the, height, yeah. yeah, the trimmer height, but then I subtract an inch and a half from that, so it needs to be yep. seven, eleven, 11 and, a half. and a half. Okay, two of them. Lay by. Not four. Yes, two, two per door, yep. Okay. Okay. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. I was right, seven and eleven and a half. Thanks for learning with me. So the closet in question, it what it is supposed to be, it's designed as another um, closet, but we don't really need it to be another closet. And let's see if I can set you up and kind of show you this space. Hold on. <laughs> so the closet, this is the closet in question. We haven't framed it out all the way yet because we're not quite sure what we want to do. It backs right up into the spare bedroom's bathroom. But this is the closet. There's closet space right here in this spare bathroom. The GoPro is currently sitting in a closet and then our laundry room I designed exceptionally large because in our last house I had the world's tiniest laundry room and it was awful I mean it literally was stackable and that was it um so I have so much space there so much space here and then this and there's already shelving in here and I know you can't go wrong with too many closets right um but we also there's two extra closets upstairs aside from the bathroom or the bedroom and the um office so I, I don't think it needs to be a closet but Bo and I are having trouble trying to decide what to do with this space I mean I guess we could just frame it up and make a bathroom extra large but then the toilet's gonna be in a weird place because it's gonna kind of be really far from the wall since we didn't plan for that and that's our that's not movable it's in concrete um, we talked about doing like a little desk type thing here I don't know any options? It's literally the opening right now, currently is for a closet. And it wouldn't be, let's see, it's only about a, it's only about 16 inches wide. 
So it's not, it wouldn't be a very big closet anyway. You could do open shelving. I don't know. If you have any uh, comments on what it should be, let me know. Leave a comment below. Tell us what you think. We don't know what to do. We keep going back and forth. He wants it to be a coffee bar. I think that'd be weird having your coffee in the hallway and not in the kitchen. Um, I don't know. <laughs>and trimmers cut uh, before Boga is home. He's still not home yet. And conveniently, he's arriving about the time it's time to go pick up baby from preschool. So um, I just sent him to do that. But I got all those done. I'm gonna try to do one whole frame before he gets here. But I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm gonna consult YouTube <laughs> and see. I'm assuming you install the trimmer and then install the header, but you know what they say about assuming. So I'm gonna watch a quick video and see what happens. If I get it right. So that's the way it's going, right? Yes. Okay. This is only an inch and a half. That's only an inch and a half. This is three and a half. Oh, okay. So. framed this wall I actually messed up and somehow I got well I know exactly what I did I laid the wall out on the other side of my stud mark and it's because we had pipes in the ground and I couldn't lay the wall right where it needed to go so I laid it off to the side and when I had this wall laid on the wrong side of the plate mark I just laid this perpendicular wall out from there and anyways I'm going back and fixing that so <clears throat> we have a three foot two rough opening here and a two foot six rough opening here and I basically had to move everything over three and a half inches for the thickness of the plate so that's what I'm doing here <clears throat> another thing um, a typical first floor framing package just uses two by twelves for headers um, a 2x12, if you look at a span chart, will basically span any double hung door, so any closet or uh, utility closet or whatever you have. So they just sent 2x12s for our framing package. I didn't check it. Obviously, the guy who did the takeoff didn't check it either. But since we're using 8-foot doors in the first floor versus your typical 7-foot seven, seven or just shy of that, um, we run out of headroom, so we have we only have uh, 104, 104 and 5 eighths is a nine foot ceiling stud, and if you take out the eight foot <clears throat> one rough opening minus the three inches that you lose with your top plate, excuse me, uh, four and a half inches that you lose with your double top plate and your inch and a half sill plate, you run out of room using a two by twelve. Um, if you check, or I check the span charts, ever all of our doors are plenty good for actually a two by, I think it was a two by 10. Even on these big doors, most of the small doors, you can actually get away with a two by eight. Megan went ahead and already cut all of our two by 12 header material, um, cause we didn't put our headers in as we go, cause I was in a hurry. So anyways, we put one of our headers together, and I might have it laid out over here still. We put one of our headers together, went to put it up, in the stud bay and then went to put trimmers next to it I don't have it laid out and we're off uh, I think it was two inches so I just went and ripped all of our header material down since it's already cut on the table saw uh, that's ready to go <coughs> so we'll just uh, start putting our final framing in the downstairs and I think that's about it apologize both all of us are sick just got back from Thanksgiving, Sunday morning. So, 
We're gonna try to struggle through a day. Two foot six will be the back side of that. So you laminate two two bys together, whether it's two by ten, two by eight, two by twelve, like this. And that is gonna sit inside of a two by four wall. So your two by fours actually measure three and a half inches. If you just laminated two two bys together, a two by is actually an inch and a half. So you would only end up with three inches and you'd be a half inch shy. It doesn't structurally matter. I've framed them both ways. This, if you space it out with a half inch piece of plywood, it gives you, I don't have a good example, but it gives you a good nailer <clears throat> on both sides of the top of the opening for your finished trim. <coughs> we're not 100% sure what we're doing for trim yet. Um, we actually might go a route that doesn't use trim. But anyways, if we do end up using trim, I'd like to have a good solid nailer there. So on all the two by four walls, I'm just spacing it out. It's, it's an easy, quick extra step. We had material laying around. This was outside, so I'm just gonna cut the rod off. Anyways, that's how you space out a hitter. With our trimmers and headers going in, we will be able to start framing the second floor of our home. Day by day, little by little, we are whittling away and making progress. Watch out, Beckett! Okay. Nice catch, Ma. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was a little scary there for a second. <laughs>